Okay, so welcome to this uh, lecture on sensor systems and applications. So we have finished our chapter one, the first two weeks. Uh, it was mainly uh, on the sensor system or IoT ecosystem, the different parts of the IoT ecosystem, the different layers, the architectures, the microcontrollers, the sensors. So now, uh, after completing the introductory part, we are going to uh, uh, to take uh, each part one by one and discuss in, in detail. And uh, the purpose of our lecture today is uh, chapter two. So we have sensors, actuators, and micro microcontrollers. So this, I think microcontrollers, we have already started in the, uh, in the lab. So we'll discuss also sensors, actuators uh, as well in this, uh, in this lecture. Okay, can you see my lecture slide? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so so this lecture is about sensors, actuators, and microcontrollers. It is over two weeks again. Okay, so the most probably today will be restricted to sensors and actuators, and next week uh, we'll continue with the uh, uh, microcontrollers, and uh, which we have already started in the. In, in the lab. So basically, uh, you are going to work uh, with sensors, with uh, actuators uh, as well, and, and microcontrollers. So I'm introducing the different uh, theoretical background uh, about sensors and actuators. So as you have better understanding uh, of it, and uh, you can better uh, better use it. So let me proceed uh, with some uh, with some definitions. So basically, to, for you to be able to use a sensor, so you need to know some theoretical background about the different types of sensors that exist so as you can make your decision with respect to what kind of sensors and how how to use uh, to use them so first of all you need to know what is called a transducer okay basically a device that converts a primary form of energy into a corresponding signal with a different uh, energy uh, energy form basically all sensors and actuators they are uh, what, what we call transducers at the end of the day because they read a value from the environment and they convert this value into a, a, a corresponding signal. Most often it is an electrical, an electrical signal, but not necessarily. But this is what is called a transducer that, uh, that transforms one form of energy into another form of energy because an electrical signal also is, is a form of, uh, of energy. So primary form of energy that we use here is... Uh, uh, mechanical, thermal, electromagnetic, optical, chemical, and many and and many others. So these are these uh, form of energy exists in our physical in our physical world. So these are the, what we are monitoring and what we are uh, uh, capturing through through my sensors. So after you uh, it take the form of a sensor or an or an actuator. So so when you hear this word transducer, so basically it is just a device. It is just a sensor that is transforming one form of energy into into another. So then come the sensor, okay, the sensor itself. So basically it reads something from the a, from the environment. It is a device that detects or measures a signal, or we also call it a stimulus, okay, in the in the physical a, a, a environment. So a stimulus can be a temperature, for example, a pressure, so a humidity. So all these are stimulus in the physical environment that our sensor uh, can, uh, can, can detect. So basically, it says here you acquire information from the from the real world. So this is for this purpose that we are going to use our our sensors. And an actuator basically performs something on the environment. Uh, so it is a device that uh, that causes something to happen in our environment. It is not necessarily reading from the environment, but for example, you have a an actuator that opens a door automatically. Uh, once uh, you press a button, the door opens automatically. So there should be an actuator that is doing this movement of opening of opening the door. Okay, or you have an actuator that starts an air conditioning system automatically. So here you will have an actuator that is that is doing. So we are going to use both sensors to read, actuator to cause something to happen in uh, in our environment. So you see uh, on the diagram below here, real world uh, sensor read from the real world. It uh, send it to a, your intelligent feedback system. This is most uh, in our case here, our microcontroller, and our microcontroller sends signal to our actuator that performs something in the in the real world. So typically, 
a sensor system. So typically interested in electronic uh, a sensor for this course, obviously. We are, we are more interested with uh, electronic electronic sensors. So most electronic sensors, they convert desired parameter, whether it is temperature, humidity, uh, a, a particular movement or whatever. So uh, convert a desirable parameter into electrically measurable signal. In our case, it would be voltage, uh, a voltage levels. So general electronics uh, sensors normally uh, can be classified in two parts. So you have primary transducer after you the word transfer transforming one form of energy into another. So here, what happened changes real world parameters into electrical signal. So whatever real world parameter that uh, we are monitoring. So basically, when we say a sensor is reading a value or a sensor is sensing something in the real world, whether it is temperature, humidity, or whatever. So basically, what we have, we have a, a sensing element. Okay, the, the inside the sensor there is a sensing element that they react to this physical uh, phenomenon. The physical phenomenon can be temperatures increasing. So something in the sensor react to this temperature increasing, and this uh, reaction is captured and translated into into electrical uh, signal. The same thing, for example, you have an optical sensor that react to light when you have intensity of light changing. So to react to it. And we capture this reaction and translate it into electrical electrical signal. So this is called primary transducer. But you do have a secondary transducer also. That in this case, <coughs> excuse me. So it converts electrical signal the other way around now. Convert electrical signal into an analog or digital a, a digital, not other way around, but it's a sequence of the event. So what happened? Primary transducers, it capture some physical phenomenon and translate into electrical signal. Now, this electrical signal, uh, basically, even in my computer, uh, if I just give voltage level, I won't be able to interpret it. If I tell you voltage level 1.5, voltage level 2, voltage level 3. So this, uh, for example, we are reading temperature uh, through a sensor. We are reading temperature. And the reading is coming like 1.5 volt, 2 volt, 3 volt, 5 volt. But this is not temperature, this is voltage. So now you will have to map this voltage that you're getting from the sensor. You will need to map it to actual uh, values, to actual temperature values that, that can be in terms of degree Celsius. So we need to convert this electrical signal that my sensor is giving me. Obviously, our sensor will not give us, even if it is a temperature sensor, will not give us a uh, reading in degree Celsius. Forget about it. It gives us a uh, reading in terms of voltage level. Now we need to convert the voltage level into values that we can interpret into degree Celsius. So this is the secondary transducer here, converts electrical signal that our sensor is giving us into analog or digital values, okay, specific values that we can, that we can read. You see the diagram here, real world, you capture temperature, they generate an analog signal in our case, for example, an electrical signal, an electrical signal is an analog signal. Then you have a secondary transducer that convert the uh, the electrical signal into values that we can read and, and interpret for for temperature, for example, degree degree Celsius. You can see down here, typical electronic sensor system. You have input from the environment. It is read by a sensor. After you inside our sensor, there is an element. There is a physical element that react to this phenomenon that is happening in the environment. And then eventually you have uh, your sensor data that goes to your microcontroller and we get access uh, through the microcontroller to the, uh, to the data. Let me proceed. Next slide. Yeah, there is very often a term that we use computer process interface, CPI, computer process interface. So to implement process control, the computer must collect data from and transmit signal to the production process. Production process is our a system that is performing the the reading of some uh, a sensor data. So what do we require? Basically, we require the sensors themselves that is measuring uh, the data from the environment. Okay. Now, measurement, very often we, we classify measurement in terms of continuous or discrete. Uh, let me give you an example of continuous. There's a sound. We are capturing a sound. Right now, I have my laptop, which is ca capturing my, 
in my vault. So this is continuous. It is a continuous uh, flow of data. Whereas discrete, discrete, it is, for example, determining a door is open or it is closed. So this is a discrete value. Either it is zero or one, it is open or, or closed, or it can be a range or whatever. So, and then actuators are after you to draft continuous or discrete process. So continuous again, uh, a, emitting a sound, for example, an alarm, trigger an alarm. Trigger an alarm is a continuous uh, a process, whereas uh, discrete is just, uh, 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 for example, just uh, a switch on something or switch off uh, something, for example. Okay, so uh, we do have also what are called ADC and DAC, analog to digital converter. ADC stands for analog to digital converter and DAC stands for digital to analog uh, converter. You know why we need ADC, ADC and DAC? I've told you, uh, we should read from the environment and translate it into digital form, okay? And we should be able to transmit from digital form in our microcontroller to, uh, a, to analog. So, uh, based on my explanation that I have given you on sensors and actuators. Now I'm telling you uh, a, a, an analog to digital converter, it converts analog signal to digital signal, a DAC, a digital to analog uh, converter, it, uh, it converts digital signal to analog signal, okay? So plus I've given you explanation for what is a sensor and what is a, an actuator. So I will put a question to you. Let me see. I have colleagues that have told me you need to pinpoint to specific student to ask uh, to ask question. So as to know whether you are you are around. So do we have around? Uh, Davison PML, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So tell me, based on the explanation that I have uh, given on what is a sensor and what is an actuator, and now I'm telling there are two devices, one that is called uh, a ADC mm -hmm. and one that's called DAC. So tell me, a sensor, what it is going to use? ADC. ADC, a sensor use uh, a, a ADC. Um, does uh, Nim Edu, do you agree with your friend uh, Piamal Davison? Hello, yes, I agree because the sensors will send the data in terms of analog and those analog data have to be converted to digital. Okay, very good. So, so both of your friends here are all right. Okay, so basically uh, a, a sensor normally will use this one uh a an analog to digital converter okay so basically in your sensor you need to have uh, to have this uh device there so as because at the end of the day when we are uh, when when we are reading we are reading the physical environment it is in analog uh, most uh, often okay because whether it is a temperature it is a pressure it is humidity it is whatever uh, temperature i've said uh, a, a position of an object movement everything all of these are you get it through analog through analog signal that is your sensors normally read analog signal so that should be now this analog signal you cannot send it to your microcontroller because your microcontroller do not interpret uh analog signal it can only understand digital signal so there is a process that should happen here analog to a to, 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 to digital so let me have another one to explain to me for the dsc which component uses the 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 the, the dsc is uh fielders chaman around chaman Yes. Yes. So, so uh, a DAC. Which one uses a DAC? A sensor or an actuator? And explain why. Yeah, you can you can set your answer. 
I, I chat, so I see that you're saying that uh, it converts digital to analog, yes, it is the actuator. Okay, yes, because the actuator normally, the actuator normally, uh, it needs to perform something on the environment. So basically, uh, basically you, we need to send a digital signal from our microcontroller to the actuator in order to perform uh, a, 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 a movement and an action on the real environment. So basically an analog, uh, an analog signal that needs to be, a digital signal that needs to be converted into analog. Okay, so yes, so you should be able to do the linking between ADC and sensor, ADAC and an actuator. Okay, so let me proceed with my lecture notes. So let's move on to the next uh, to the next slide. So this is just giving you a picture. Observe this picture. This is called the transformation process. Okay, uh, let me start on this side here. On this side here. So you see uh, on, on, on this side, you see a, uh, a sensor is here. We have our sensors here, which read from the environment. Let's say this is the environment. Okay, which read the uh, information from the environment. If this is what I call a physical phenomenon, it can be continuous or discrete uh, variables. Okay, so this is read by my sensors, and then you see here is the ADC. I've told you the way we get the whatever we are getting here. This is analog. Okay, uh, a voice, uh, light, uh, uh, temperature, whatever you will be getting here. It is, it is in terms of analog signal. This needs, for it to go to my controller, microcontroller, our computer, it needs to be converted to digital form. This is where we use the ADC. Now my computer is processing this information. Now you see on this side, on this side you have actuators. That is, for example, if someone come in front of a door, uh, uh, anyone, uh, what kind of sensor we, we should be using here in order to determine whether someone is in front of a door? Motion right. sensor. Okay, a motion, uh, a motion sensor. There are PIs, a, a PIO sensor as, as well, motion sensors presents, uh, uh, that detect presence of an object, yes. So we get this uh, information. This information is converted to a digital signal to go to my microcontroller. My microcontroller know now there is a person in front of a door, there's a program that say, okay, when there's a person in front of a door, the door should open. Now, the microcontroller sent a signal to the actuator, which is a, I don't know, an arm, okay, an arm that pull the door, okay? So, but this signal needs to go to the arm, okay? To the arm that is annexed to the door, okay? So then I sent a signal, okay, signal, I don't know, one, whatever, one means open door, zero means close, uh, a closed door. So we send a signal one. The signal one is converted into an analog signal. Okay, for example, an electric signal that uh, stop the arm to start pulling the, 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 the door. Switch on the arm so as it start pulling the door in order to open to open the door. So basically, this is the actuator which will be which will be doing a doing it. Let me see if there is someone who wants to get admitted. Try to be on time. Okay, so let's get back here. So basically, you understand now the 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 arm uh, has got a voltage level that has come to its uh, uh, to its mechanism in order to start pulling the door. We pull the door on the environment. This is the environment. It's a transformation process that is that is happening. And then I, ha I can have this sense here. Yeah, that sense, yeah, door is open. Now door is open, whether we should close it, and I think depending on your program that you have written here inside your microcontroller, it will do the corresponding, the corresponding action. So this is what is called computer process control, control system. You see the role of the sensor, you see the role of the actuator, you see the role of ADC, DAC. Okay, everything is there in this, in this diagram. So you, you may be, uh, in, in, in the future, you may be asked to explain this computer process control system. Eh? So I've, I've explained it in very much detail each, uh, each part of the audit. Let's continue. Okay, let's uh, focus now on the sensor, the particular a, a, a sensor itself, okay? We'll see different types of sensors, classification of sensors and everything as, uh, as we proceed. By the way, I've already posted this lecture notes on Google Classroom. Okay. So uh, I've told you, I've told you this, this represents our sensor. Basically, this is a physical medium. We are monitoring something in the uh, physical world, in the, real, in the real world, the physical medium. I've told you inside our sensor, there is something called an element. It's sensing, 
a sensing element. The sensing element reacts to the physical phenomenon. Now, uh, uh, you have, for example, what, what do we have in a, uh, in a th thermometer? Is a substance that we have in a thermometer. What, how do we call it? Mercury. Okay, mercury. So you, see, this is the sensing element. That is the the the, the mercury. Uh, in in the case of a thermometer, I'm I'm saying. So what happened to mercury? Mercury expand when temperature increases. This is what happened. So it react to the uh, to an increasing temperature, and then the mercury increases. Then you see uh, where. Uh, what is the temperature, where it is stopping, then you say this is the degree Celsius, uh, uh, this is the temperature that we, are, that we are having. So the same thing happened inside your sensor. If there is no mercury, but there is another element. There is uh, a wire, there can be uh, a substance, there can be a chemical solution, substance, whatever, okay, that react to the, uh, to, to, to the physical environment, whether it is humidity, whether it is, uh, it can be, uh, a, a, a sensing element that react to uh, to audio, for example, to light. Okay, so it capture this reaction. So this it, it change the the element. Then based on how the element is changing, this result in some voltage level. We convert. There is a conversion that is done in terms of uh, the reaction of your sensing element and to a particular voltage, a voltage level. Because at the end of the day, we are talking about. Uh, electronic electrical uh, sensors so it, uh, it generate a particular voltage uh, voltage level and i have told you earlier the voltage level somehow it is meaningless to us we don't understand what is a voltage 1.52 or whatever we will have to convert this into meaningful information that is what is a degree celsius or what is uh, uh, the humidity what is the pressure whatever okay and then this become important information information for us uh, here so you see here small letter s this is a stimulus <clears throat> uh, stimulus can be an increase in temperature or increase in pressure whatever this is a stimulus that is happening in the real world and at the end of the day i have big letter s capital letter s this is the signal that i am uh, that i am uh, getting so uh, and 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 very often uh, the challenge here is to catch is to determine the relationship that exists between small letter s and big uh, letter s then you can do the relationship when something happens in the real world when it changes by one by one in the uh, in the real world the signal should increase by five then i will be able to read a value for for temperature so you will see this okay the, this this part is very important here practically every year i have a question with respect to transfer function to calculate to calculate, uh, I have an example that also that I'm going to give you here. So basically, this is what is called the transfer function. What I've explained to you, how the stim a stimulus, okay, leads to some value that uh, that we can that we can read. So this is called a transfer function. This is done by a transfer function. So big letter S, capital letter S, is uh, the value that uh, of interest to me: degree Celsius, temperature, humidity, whatever. Okay, and uh, small letter s after you. This is a stimulus. Whatever is happening in the in the real world, and when I apply a function f to it, it gives me uh, the actual value that is of interest to me. So where s is the output signal, what is the signal that I'm I'm getting from the sensor? S small letter s is the stimulus, and this is a functional relationship. F s is the functional relationship. What what relationship exists between the stimulus and the information of interest? A, a to me so if you have a binary sensor it is very easy uh, most often we don't have binary sensor unfortunately okay binary sensor if s is capital letter s1 when a small letter s is greater than zero when there's a change in the as soon as there's a change in the stimulus okay uh, you get a value one okay uh, for example let me give you an example here for binary uh, to determine whether a door is closed or open so it can be only two possibilities. Either the door is closed or the door is open. Okay. So as soon as, for example, there is an angle, whatever you're, you're looking at the angle uh, of, of the door, if it is greater than some value, we say door open. If it is uh, uh, less than some, some value, we say close. So it is as, as, uh, as straightforward as this. But unfortunately, most of our sensors, they are not binary sensors. 
So the ideal function form for an analog measuring device. Now we are talking about an analog measuring measuring device, not the binary open close zero one, is a simple proportional relationship. So normally this relationship exists between the output signal and S, it's more like a S is our input signal if you want. Okay, the stimulus, whatever is happening in the real world. Okay, and uh, small letter M is a constant of proportionality. After you, when uh, when small letter S is varying by some number, temperature is increasing in the real uh, in the real world by some value. Okay, this is multiplied by a constant to give me my uh, uh, real temperature. A, a for my thermometer, for example, where and capital letter C is an output value at a stimulus. Yeah, you need to have a reference point. This is a capital letter C is a reference, is a reference point. Okay, that is output value at stimulus value of zero. So when when there is no stimulus, when no, I can't say there is no stimulus, but uh, when uh, the stimulus is zero, for example. Uh, let's say I have uh, a sensor that is capturing decibel, you know, sound, sound in terms of, of decibel. When there is no sound, there is no noise, for example, so this is zero. Okay, so what is what is a uh, value of of C when the stimulus is is zero? So there is a value that normally uh, it, it say we keep on reading this value when there is no stimulus. Okay, this is the value that we that, that that we get, and then this tends to be a a, a constant. As soon as there's a change in uh, uh, in the stimulus, I start talking. So there's a noise. Okay, the uh, the decibel increase. Then uh, this will get some value s uh, a s here, and this will be added with when it is zero. Okay, this is the constant when there is no stimulus. This value is is uh, is uh, when there is no stimulus. S is zero. M multiplied by zero is zero. So S is equal to C. That is, without any stimulus, what is value C? What, what are we reading when there is no stimulus from the sensor? So this is the big value C. So for all sensor, you need to know its value C. When there is no stimulus, what is the value we are getting? Because this is zero. On this side, it will be zero. Anything at the to zero is itself. So we need to determine this value, value C. I'll give you an example. Let me see. Yeah, this is this is an example. So let's let's read this example. Very very important for you. I've already um, I've already told you that uh, you will get a similar question like this. Okay, in uh, either your test or exam. So let's see the output uh, voltage of a particular thermocouple. Here we are talking about a sensor that is called the thermocouple sensor that measure uh, a temperature. Okay, so the output voltage of a particular thermocouple sen sensor is registered to be 42.3 okay so we are given a case here i'm getting a value 42.3 okay at temperature 105 degree celsius so yes we are uh, restoring a value of 42.3 volt millivolt okay so 42.3 millivolt after you the thermocouple is giving me some voltage level but this voltage level i'm already told this voltage level, 42.3, it corresponds to a temperature of 105, 105 degrees. Okay, this I have already confirmed with, with another equipment that was giving me for it was giving me 105 degrees, and I have checked on my thermocouple, it is giving me 42.3 millivolt. So I can say that 105 uh, degrees Celsius is equivalent to 42.3 millivolt. Okay, this is given to you. It had previously been set to emit a zero voltage level at zero degree Celsius. Okay, to keep things simple, to keep things simple. So if I show to you our functional relationship uh, again here, okay, we are we are told here when uh, when uh, the stimulus value is zero here, when the stimulus value is zero, because this is what have been told here. Uh, it had previously been set to emit zero voltage at zero degrees Celsius. This is our stimulus. Uh, uh, what I want to read is degree temperature. Okay, it corresponds to zero voltage. So basically, what we are saying here, uh, when uh, degree is zero, C is C is zero. The output value is is zero. So both 
they correspond to each other in terms of, of zero. When one is zero, the other is, uh, is zero. That is, when the temperature is zero degrees Celsius, the voltage level is, is zero voltage. So this is what I've been told as well. Okay, so two information given to us. When it is 105 degrees Celsius, it is 42.3 millivolt. When it is zero degrees Celsius, it is zero volt. These two informations are given to me. Let me continue. So since an output-input relationship, output-input relationship, this is the output-input relationship we're talking here, the transfer function, okay, exists between the two temperatures, okay, determine, so between the two temperatures here, zero and 105, so there's an output-input uh, relationship, okay, uh, because thermocouple is giving this when it is 105, and thermocouple is giving this when it is zero, okay. So determine the transfer function of the thermocouple first, and then uh, the temperature corresponding to a voltage level 15.8. When it is 15.8 millivolt, which temperature it is referring to? But first, I need to determine this transfer, this transfer function. Okay, that is that is S is equal to F S. So how to determine this using the two cases given to us here? If we have been given two cases: 42.3 millivolt, the temperature is 105. Uh, is a zero volt, the temperature is zero degree Celsius. So this is how we do it. We replace, we replace, you know, so this is our transfer function, S is equal to capital letter C M S. So this I have already told you, for all sensors, you use this formula, okay? Now you need to determine C. What is C? I've already told you, when the stimulus is zero, C is zero, so I put zero here, okay, I replace C by zero. And uh, I know already a value of S. Okay, I know already value of S, which is 42.3. When it is 42.3, uh, the uh, capital letter C is zero. Okay, the stimulus is 105 degrees Celsius. Here is the stimulus, a small letter S. But I want to determine why I'm inputting, why I'm putting 42.3 and 105 in this formula. In this formula, C I know. Some, uh, there is one unknown here. I know capital letter S, I know small letter S, I know C. What is missing? M is missing. Okay, so I want to know this M, which is a constant. Once I get M, then I can calculate for any given uh, a particular stimulus, I will be able to calculate its, its degree, its degree, uh, uh, its voltage level, for, for example. Okay, so, so basically I replace it in the formula here. Capital letter S is this voltage level. The stimulus in the environment is 105. I know that uh, capital letter C is zero. So I make M subject and formula M is equal to 0 0.4 in this case. When you make M subject formula, uh, that is uh, I transfer 105 here through so 42.3 divided by 105 it is giving me 0 0.4 uh, constant. It is a constant, 0 0.4. So my formula, if you replace uh 0 0.4 in this formula here okay so s depending on the stimulus m is 0 0.4 here it is 0 0.4 the c disappear because c is zero anything add uh, with zero is itself so uh, i'm not putting zero plus zero again again here so this is my transfer function because c is zero so you can remove it okay and m i've just calculated above is 0 0.4 so now Using this formula, given one, you can calculate the other automatically. So what I have with this, my transfer function, the transfer function of the thermocouple is, I should say, S is equal to 0 0.4 S. So you need to give this formula, okay? This is a formula. And I recall when I have given this question in past test and exam, so some student forget to tell me that the transfer function is this. Should You should give me this, okay, this transfer function. Okay, so next, number two, it says, the temperature corresponding to a voltage output of 15.8 millivolts. So I know my capital letter S, I need to determine which temperature will give this voltage, uh, this voltage level. So I replace it in my formula, I have my transfer function that says this is the degree, this is voltage. So I replace the voltage here, 15.8 millivolt is equal to 0 0.4, times small letter s, this is what I want to determine here, small small letter s, that is degree Celsius, 
So I transfer 0 0.4 there, okay, 15.8 divided by 0 0.4, as is equal to 39.22 degrees Celsius. So when it is, when the stimulus, when in the real environment it is 39.22, the voltage level that the thermocouple will give me, it is 15.15.8. So given any uh, stimulus, you can get the voltage level. Given any voltage level, you can get the, the stimulus, the degree Celsius, because you have been able to derive to derive this transfer function, this uh, formula, okay? And how we have derived it. So you need to have two information, a reference point. This is our reference point. When it is 42.3 voltage, the degree Celsius, the stimulus is uh, 105. And this is my C, capital letter C. When it is zero there, it is zero here as well. The voltage level is zero. So having those two reference points, you put it in the formula, you get your transfer function, and then you use the transfer function to calculate anything uh, you want. So be careful with this one. I'll explain it in detail. Anyone have a uh, question with respect to this explanation here? Transfer function, it applies to all sensors. We call it the functional relationship. And I have given you an, an example here. Any question? If not, uh, I will continue. Okay, let me continue. Okay, so let me continue with the types of sensors, clusters of sensors. So there are different ways to classify a to classify a, sen a sensors. So there are four, four major clusters of, of sensors. One that we call tactile sensors, contact a contact sensors. So very often uh, sensors are classified in terms of uh, uh, a contact sensors or contactless, uh, a non-contact uh, a sensor. So a limit switch, for example, is a, is a tactile sensor. Then you have proximity and range. From a distance, you're able to know uh, what is the distance from the sensor to the object. So this is called a non-contact sensor. You have vision sensors, okay, for recognition, orientation, and then miscellaneous uh, in terms of temperature, pressure, strain. So all these are uh, different types of, of sensors. I've already mentioned to you, sensors can be analog. Most sensors are analog actually. Okay, it uh, monitor a continuous physical a quantity. For example, sound, light. So all these are analog uh, a signal, but you can have digital signals that uh, measure a discrete physical quantity. Discrete, it can be a one of a range of values only, only one value from a range of a from a number of values. Okay, these are examples of uh, of sensors, position sensors. So it is in terms of position sensors, velocity, temperature, pressure. So position sensors, very often you have a type of sensor that is called a limit switch. I was uh, having a look at those sensors. I'll show to you. I'm sharing my whole screen, so probably you would be able to get this. This is uh, limit switches, okay? Uh, it uh, monitors a particular position, a particular limit in terms of a, of a, a position says here. In engineering, electrical engineering, a limit switch is a switch operated by the motion of a machine part or presence of an, of, of an object. So depending on which position, as soon as it comes into contact with something, okay, it do something, it, it react, it react with there. They are used for controlling machinery as, as uh, safety interlocks, okay. A limit switch is an electromechanical device that consists of an actuator mechanically linked to a set of contacts. When an object comes into contact with the actuator, the device operates the contacts to make it make or break an electrical connection. As soon as uh, it becomes in contact with something, okay, it uh, completes the circuit or it breaks a particular circuit to do a, to do something. So this is called a limit, a limit switch. Let me continue here. Potentiometer. You will work with a potentiometer in the lab. I have one lab sheet where. Uh, also to do something with a potentiometer. So a potentiometer which is what it is like a, uh, how do you say, let me see, uh, I should have open. Okay, this is a, an example of a potential potentiometer. You use potentiometer a lot. Uh, for example, on the radio, I don't know whether you have a, a, a radio when you turn the volume, it is a round uh, knot, when you turn the volume to increase or to decrease, the, the, the volume in cars or whatever you have. All these are done by, by potentiometer. By when you turn this uh, uh, knot, okay, this uh, 
uh, it, it, it gives an angular motion, okay, and convert this angular motion uh, to something, okay, to increase the volume for an audio, for example. Let me see, you see here, a potentiometer is a free uh, terminal resistor with a sliding or rotating contact that forms an adjustable voltage divider. So when you increase, uh, you turn, okay, uh, it, it gives a particular voltage. So potentiometer commonly used to control electrical devices such as volume control on an audio equipment. This is an example I was, I was telling. So this is an, an uh, potentiometer. And uh, I don't recall uh, the lab that I have said, you, when you turn a potentiometer, yeah, it increases uh, the light of a bulb. Okay, it, uh, it make it become dim or it make it become brighter when you turn this potential. I think I have, uh, we have this lab uh, uh, in, in one of our lab sheet. So this is a potential meter, resolvers, resolvers. Again, it is it uh, for angular motion. These are resolvers. It determine a particular angular, a angular a motion. A resolver is a type of rotary electrical transformer used for measuring degree of, uh, of rotation, okay? Let me continue what type of sensors we have. Encoders, we use encoders a lot. Again, for angular linear a location, okay? Encoder normally converts, let me see. These are encoders. Uh, you have audio encoder, for example, convert digital audio to analog audio signal, video encoder. For sensors, you have, for example, rotary encoder, okay? That converts rotary position some uh, a rotation a position to electric electronic signal okay depending on which position it is it will give a particular electronic electronic uh, signal so this is an encoder let me continue uh tachometer you you know uh, what is a a tachometer you have seen a tachometer so these are tachometers okay uh, where a needle uh, uh, move in order to show to do a particular position okay so a tachometer is an instrument measuring the rotational speed of a shaft or disc as in a motor or other, a other machine. So this is a tachometer. Let me continue. And all, most of the sensor you notice analog, it can be analog, it can be digital. Here it uses AC or, or DC, DC current. Temperature you know very well, okay? Temperature is sensors and pressure a, a pressure a sensor as well i think i have uh, in one of my lab where we use a pressure a pressure sensor okay so let me continue here with respect to the sensors a transducers uh, i've explained earlier it transform from one form of energy to another okay so adc i've explained you analog to digital dac digital to analog okay analyzers normally they are counters timers 